Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. And I know, John, you're on your show, the uh, your website is thelibertyman.com, thelibertyman.com. Your show is from 7 to 9 a.m. Monday to Friday. And uh, you've been following the Cypress thing, and I heard from Ann that you're going to do your prep check this weekend. Right. And, of course, your website is homeland-defenseforyou.com. John, tell us what you're following on your show and your, what your research and contacts say. Because the letter that I read a bit earlier from Joel Skousen and the research I've done, this is probably one of the stupidest moves on the part of the global bankers they could make, not only trying to steal the money of the Russian KGB and mafia, but the idea of creating a stampede of, of and it's not over. They've, we're going to open the banks on Thursday. Now people in Cyprus are still just using credit cards. The businesses are kind of hanging on by their fingernails, regular businesses. But the idea of trying to seize people's deposits, which is theft, got an immediate and violent response back from the legislators. Right. Uh, and well, it scared people all across Europe and around the world. I mean, the first comment yeah, my wife sure. Michelle said is, uh, should we take all our money out of the bank? And I'm thinking, well, oh, my Gerald, gosh. Gerald Salente said uh, more than two years ago that this was, that the event would start in the Mediterranean, and he hit the nail on the head. Uh, Stan Deo, I mean, excuse me, uh, Steve Quayle is reporting it from a very dear friend of his who goes by the name of the lawman uh, that this uh, uh we got it coming to this country in about 60, 60 days, where they'll, they're not calling it a bank holiday, but it would be severe restrictions on normal banking, according to Steve's yeah, private yeah. source. They're, they're going to narrow the bottleneck. In other words, you can only take so much money out per day out Precisely. of your bank account. You can't move it from one account to another. And if you try to move large amounts of money, you're going to have somebody that, that's going to, uh, to grab you and zip tie you, and you're going to take you off for questioning. Well, maybe or maybe not, but it would be a, a choke point. It would not be officially a bank holiday. No. If they want, it would accomplish their goal of severe restrictions on people's ability to conduct what might be called normal financial transactions. And, of course, having access to cash is going to be severely restricted uh, because cash is, is, is a private way to conduct business. And the last thing they want is people to have independence and privacy in their financial uh, transactions. Uh, well, I know that, Mark, I know that uh, Max Kaiser, who's probably one of the co-inventors of the Bitcoin system, uh, and there's BitPay, etc. I talked to some of the BitPay people. This has a potential, because it's risen so fast, of actually blowing the banking system completely out of the water, because it's a fully encrypted, point-to-point a conversion of cash in any currency on Earth. And I really think that we're, we're seeing the end of the tunnel, and it's another train coming at us. I think that we're going to see the emergence of a super flu this year, this November, a coronal mass ejection, and I think we're going to see, if not a bank holiday, a version that they'll call sub-threshold so they won't get a violent pushback from the public. But I think they're underestimating the public, just like the idiots in Europe, so that they weren't going to get a pushback from the Cypriot government. I think they're going to see, even now, I would bet institutional investors in Europe and America are already yanking their money out of the bank and trying to do everything they can to evade seizure or bottlenecks of getting their cash moved from one account to another. Well, they, they underestimated uh, Cyprus and, and the connect, people they're connected to. Uh, that, that's a gross mistake on their part. Uh, the people that are connected to the, the Cypriot uh, banking community are very powerful. And we, we were talking a moment ago about these Russians. I mean, the, the Russia, ma, Russian mafia and the KGB are basically the same entity. And yeah, exactly. They have, they, have access, they have access to resources that... Uh, uh, we see in films uh, and we see in these spy movies, uh, there really are people like that. They really do have private jets and jump out of airplanes in the middle of the night and kill people. And, right. <laughs> and, you know, that's not fantasy. That's real. Right. And I think what people should realize is, is that uh, these gas resources off the Cyprus island, I think are part of the of the deck of cards that are being played here because if Cyprus uh, one of the ways of them getting out of this disaster is to sell bonds leveraged on the gas fields and of course the Russians want to get a port in in Cyprus and they also want to have access to those gas fields because they already loaned them 2.5 billion dollars if they bail out Cyprus they're going to want to have uh, first come first serve access to that gas field they want to have first dibs on it and they also want to have a port there and they want to have an end to European banking which means the Russians and Chinese are not at all happy by the European firewall against foreign investment by Chinese and Russian sources and they already have a stranglehold in terms of gas because uh, Europe if the Russians decide to turn off the tap their Europeans are going to freeze in the dark 
and their North Sea oil gas fields are just drying right up. So the Europeans are totally captive of Russia. Well, we have totally. a couple of we have two plus centuries worth of uh, wars being fought to control natural resources. So this would be no exception there. Right. Uh, Turkey may have something to say about it. You know, it's basically a half hour boat ride from the mainland of Turkey to uh, Cyprus, and uh, uh, Turkey's been kind of quiet in all this so far, haven't they? Yeah, and Turkey, by the way, uh, doesn't have very good oil fields. It only supplies one tenth of its own energy from its own oil fields. That's why the completion of the Iranian uh, to Turkish pipeline was a big deal just a few months ago. And most people aren't aware of this, but there's another pipeline just about to come online as well for, from Iran to Turkey. Uh, Turkey's alliances with Europe could well break over this issue because Europeans are going to want to steal this gas field. That's what I see coming. They want to one way or another steal it from Turkey. Well, that's certainly very, very likely, and we would see NATO in the middle of that, wouldn't we? Yeah, I think, though, if you look at the table of nations that invades the Middle East at the time of the end with Russia, Turkey's right there. They're not with Europe. They're with Russia and China and all the Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Azerbaijan, and all the Stan republics. So, uh, you know, as much as uh, Tayyip Erdogan and the secular Turkish figure that they're going to continue maintaining control of Turkey, Turkey is going to take a hard right toward extreme Islam, I guess, in the near future. And especially when you try to steal their oil and gas, it'll it'll embolden the people, especially the people in eastern Turkey that are all Kurds, to carve off a big chunk of Turkey and turn it into a part of Kurdistan, which is northern Iraq now, the largest supply in one nation on earth of oil and gas is northern right. Turkey. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I mean northern Iraq, northern Iraq, which is Iraq, basically which Kurdistan. Is yeah. Kurds, yeah. Yeah, and basically is the resurrection of the ancient Medo-Persian Empire. Remember. When King Nebuchadnezzar, after he died, uh, King Darius came in from Persia, and literally they opened the gates up, didn't fight him at all. I just said, come on in, uh, King, you know, and he just kind of marched into the city of Babylon, and they right. honored him as king. They didn't fight. They realized that if they tried to fight, they're just going to starve to death and get slaughtered by him, so they just kind of bowed down to him when he marched into the gates. He didn't have to fight at all. King Darius just took it over. Well, Kurdistan is similar to Wyoming or Montana in that the natural resources gives them some leverage that they would never have otherwise. Yeah, but the amount of oil there now is at least uh, uh, estimated between 12 and 14 billion barrels of oil. Uh, so they have considerably more oil. There was only about 800 million barrels of oil left in, in uh, Saudi Arabia, which they say will run out in, tw- in 20 years. So... Um, Kurdistan, which is northern Iraq, is building their own separate infrastructure, etc., and they have their own separate military and army separate from the Iraqi government. So the Iraqi government, they have an autonomous province that's basically now northern Iraq is Kurdistan, even if it's not declared by the United Nations. And uh, I see this oil situation in Cyprus as being the real issue is not the the grabbing of funds, because the amount of money they're going to get from the, from the, the poor people of Cyprus was going to keep their government going for maybe hours or days. But the real issue is they're trying to put a the squeeze on the Russians while the Russians are making a big ploy to take over the gas fields and have a port there. I think that's what's going on, the dirty deals behind the scene. And it's Absolutely. really stupid. To, yeah, that's what's really going on. Absolutely. The Russians are cutting deals behind the scenes to accomplish their goals and, and please the parties that need to be pleased so they right. can do what they want to do. Absolutely. That is exactly what's going on. Yeah, and what's really happening, too, is they're trying to decide over the last 20 years what kind of a Europe they're going to have. And what Russia wants to do is they want to be in Europe. In other words, they want to be in the larger Europe. If they're going to be bailing out all these countries, which they have plenty of resources to do so, they want a place at the table just like the Chinese want a place at the table. And they haven't been, they've been excluded. And Moscow considers itself part of Eastern Europe. So what I suspect will happen in the next few years, you won't just have a resurrection of the, quote, unholy Roman Empire. Right. Both legs of the statue of Nebuchadnezzar uh, that were in well, his dream. Well, Dr. Bill, I'm going to I'm we'll we'll bail out of here and let you and Ann take it from here. Sounds good. Well, the news is that uh, Cyprus is boiling. Uh, bank accounts are, are uh, squeamish. And a war in the Middle East is brewing now that the usurper-in-chief has visited and done nothing but politic again. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we're going to hear from Ann in just a second. Uh, We have... uh, Alexander Bachman back on his website, alexanderbachman, B-A-C-K-M-A-N.com. And um, Alexander, 
you've got some uh, lots of really interesting sources too. The uh, issue in Cyprus, if you actually look behind the scenes, is in a sense an attack on the money laundering by the KGB and and, and the mafia in Cyprus, which is eight times bigger than the real economy. The uh, European Central Bank and Christine Lagarde the same day got charged with a $500 million uh, charge of putting money into, directing money to one of her friends by the French government. So the globalists are at each other's throats. Uh, the Russians are jockeying for control of the gas fields off of Cyprus, which are basically Cyprus is only half a, an hour's boat ride from Turkey. Uh, so Cyprus is sitting on a giant oil field, a gas field that literally is contiguous with the Leviathan fields off of uh, Israel, which literally goes right through the valley of Jezreel to the mother load, which is down at the southwest end of the Dead Sea at literally Mount Sodom, the, the place where if you actually walk there, you can see the, the, the pillar of salt that they call Lot's Wife. And that 26,000 foot uh, salt dome sits on top like a cork on a bottle of the largest abiotic supply of oil and gas on the planet, over 27.3 trillion, with a T trillion, dollar, uh, barrels of oil. So uh, that's right at the southwest end of the Dead Sea. And the oil engineer FICO told me specifically that they had an explosion back at the time of Lot that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and they worked out that it was equivalent to 500 thousand Hiroshima's in terms of explosive power and threw most of the debris into space. So most of that area wasn't a big hole in the ground. It was a well-watered valley of Sedim, which is why Lot bought his 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 sheep and his, his large flocks there, because we're talking about thousands of animals, because it was plenty of water and plenty of place to grow. It certainly, if you went there today, you'd see it's a desolate place, uh, pretty nastily destroyed. In ancient times, you can still find sulfur balls if you walk around the areas of Sodom now, and if you light them, they burn at 6,000 degrees. So what is going on, I believe, behind the scenes is Russia in the long run is jockeying to become part of a larger Europe and is jockeying to get a port in Cyprus, which is what they don't want to lose in Turkey and Syria, and is, uh, along with the Chinese, wanting to get, become a player at the table with this new Europe that's in economic distress. And... Uh, the Europeans grabbing the money of the KGB was one of the stupidest things possible to do, and it's just going to increase the chances the Russians are going to play even more hardball at the table. So um, that's where I think the things are going. That's behind-the-scenes analysis of what I see happening. Well, an another thing that I'd like to add is also that this is uh, an economical uh, hit for Cyprus and a possible win for the Russians, but also that... Uh, Cyprus is a very important uh, military backup base for the Israelis uh, to conduct uh, an airstrike against Iran, etc. Cyprus is being considered as a backup military outpost for the Israelis because it's so close, you know, on the Mediterranean Sea. So maybe exactly, all of this yeah. is, uh, is being done on purpose uh, for a specific reason in order to, uh, to gain control of Cyprus economically so the Russians can take control and, say, and tell the Israelis, no, 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 you now you don't have a backup base here to uh, conduct your attacks against well, it, Iran. it wouldn't surprise me, especially if they have a naval base with large Russian aircraft carriers and other systems there. Uh, and my guess is they would they would probably put it on the Turkish side of the island, which is closer to the gas fields. But there's, a, there's enough gas to supply at least 40 percent of the entire European needs in gas alone, at least initially, and it could be even greater than that. So, what, what what's going on in Cyprus, which is a pretty poor economy, has for hundreds of years been a place to launder money and have foreign banks park money like the mafia and the KGB. And by the way, anybody who believes the Soviet Union went went away, I've got a bridge on the moon to sell you, because the underground Communist Party in real Russia and the reemergence of the Soviet Union is only months or years away. Soviet Union never went away. People need to understand this. And my old Russian friend said, all we do is change hats. And that's an actual quote. Okay, All we do is change hats. So the oligarchs and these other ones, the same white Russians, who go down to the gray building with a little chit of paper, could get borscht sausage, CD players, uh, plasma screen TV sets, or anything they want their hearts desire, the best black Russian caviar, the best champagne from France, whatever they desired if they're a member of the Communist Party and have a senior little piece of chit of paper, they can go down to the indescript gray building without windows and obtain it. There, if you want to call the KGB Costco, how's that? Well, it sounds well, you know, and, and right now with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi leaving for Amman, Jordan after visiting Netanyahu, uh, well, 
they gave uh, Iran another three months, you know, uh, well, you know, let's keep negotiating until you have uh, 100 nuclear bombs. So, Well, right, right now the fact is that I have from my sources that, that Iran has had nuclear weapons five years and that Syria was going to have nuclear weapons when they bombed the, the reactor recently, just a couple of years ago the Israelis did. But the Iranians and the North Koreans and the Pakistanis have been working for years on these. At the very least, all they need is to have cobalt-60. They don't even need to have, quote, a true nuclear weapon. They just need cobalt-60 for medical waste, apply it as a sticky bomb to a conventional weapon or a fuel air bomb, which is the equivalent of blasting power of a nuclear weapon, and make everything in the area radioactive and dying. So this idea that we can do an asymmetric war with a nation and finally push them into the dust uh, is insane. War is obsolete. We haven't as a people or humanity has some grasp the idea that war is now obsolete, that our religions and uh, as we currently practice them on this planet is self-destructive and going to destroy humanity and everything on the planet, <clears throat> that we're not doing the will of the Most High God, and we have an evil a culture that has been ruled by trans-dimensional beings that literally have infected everything from our media to our minds to our medical system, and uh, if anybody asks questions or raises issues that questions the so-called uh, public idea of what's, what reality is, you're considered either insane or you're a pariah or uh, you should just be ignored or you need to be jailed or executed. So one of those possibilities, and the fact is that uh, what, what's happening now is all the detractors would say that you're just conspiracy theories, as I've said before, that their tongue is now stuck, dried to the roof of their mouth, their spittle has dried up, and their glands are now shriveled away so they can no longer even spit on us because there's nothing left. Exactly. I mean, right now with Iran and uh, this new super secret underground uh, installation that they have that is 14 miles long and 7.5 miles wide, underneath uh, the ground they are uh, conducting you know, on the Euro Mountains, uh, the plutonium two. based weapons. Yeah. You're talking about the two giant facilities in Russia in the Ural Mountains? No, I'm talking about the, the facility that is inside uh, Iran. And, uh, oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, one, uh, the giant facility under Qum, the, the holy mountain of Qum. Well, and by the way, it's far too deep for even a nuclear... installation, yes. Yeah, and, and then, by the way, there's no way that our bunker buster nukes could even get even near to the Qum reactor or centrifuge areas. It's so deep, it's impossible. So well, this the, idea the, they're going to do it... Yeah, this base is called Quds, uh, which means uh, Jerusalem, and uh, right. and uh, it's almost 50 miles from another site previously secretly exposed in 2009, but this is near the Fordo nuclear facility, right. um, and this is uh, where they really have, the, they're uh, arming the weapons, you know, with the plutonium-based weapons, they have missiles all around the installation. Uh, it's getting serious, and I don't know how much more time... Uh, is the, the U.S. is going to be diplomatically trying to work this out with the P5 nations and everything. It's not going to work. Uh, Iran just wants the bomb and they want to use it. Now, the situation here is dire in circumstances for the United States because uh, Obama basically is just playing, you know, the, the simple uh, diplomatic puppet man. That he, well, he's doing more than that. He's playing, he's being a good little Muslim globalist boy. Well, they want to recognize uh, Michelle Obama now, which is interesting. In the in Islamic nations, they want to recognize her. Uh, in what way? They want to honor her, yeah. As a good gardener, or what? <laughs> and hey, we're back, and uh, you mentioned on the break um, something very significant, uh, Alexander. I want to hear from Ann first about some of the things in Louisiana, but... The uh, Utah facility to literally gather data to get ready for what we call the black truck visit, which means at 3 o'clock in the morning you're going to hear a knock, 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 and it's not FedEx, it's not UPS, it's HHS, Homeland Security. They're here to take your ass away. They're here to execute you. They might not even bring you to the truck. They may just put a bullet in your head and put you in a body bag and throw you in the back of the truck to go to a mass grave because the honesty, the, the, the plan of the government isn't to inter you. It's to throw you in a mass grave. And people say, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. I said, look, when you have giant facilities literally collating every tweet, every email, every fax, every comment on talk radio, everything you can imagine, people think that this is just like a warm-up. And then I see, you know, stupid shows on TV like Doomsday Preppers where guys figure, I'm heading off to Costa Rica. All you're doing by going to Costa Rica or the southern tip of South American Patagonia is you're changing the chipped date of your expiration. You are not changing anything because there's no way you can escape 
what's coming on this planet. You can't. All you're going to do is delay it by a matter of weeks or months. And most people aren't going to survive their preps, to be honest with you, because they're going to make stupid moves, or they think they're going to survive by themselves without a group of people, or they're going to go to a nasty country that doesn't have any right to bear arms or do anything to protect yourselves, or you don't even have a constitutional awareness of what your rights as an individual or human being are, because you go to a lot of countries and they don't have the same values as us in America. Um, Alexander, you mentioned. I want you to mention this about this facility in Utah. People need to get a reality check and to realize this isn't the time for any more stupid comments of saying that we are conspiracy theorists. They need to smarten up and stand and start smell the coffee and realize these giant databases are to identify people like Alexander Bachman, uh, Ann Morrison, John Moore, anybody who speaks up, even you who speak up on a Twitter or a Facebook and you just got a regular job, you're going to be on a database and they're going to rate you, hmm, is this a person, a red person, red you're dead, is it a green person, we can kind of reform you, or is it a blue person, what color are you? And if you don't think you're going to get on one of these lists, you're brain dead and you're soon going to be either hauled away in the middle of the night, when the, when the disasters do strike in the next months and years, or you're going to end up in a civil detention camp when they do finally declare various levels of martial law, which are coming. As much as you wanted to say it's not going to happen, whether it's now or 2018, it's coming. Drones over America right now, up to 30,000 being deployed, and two years from now, weaponized, where they can lock onto you while you're eating your Wheaties and hit you with a Hellfire missile. This is not a freaking joke. 1.6 billion plus bullets, many of them hollow hit point bullets. This is not a joke when it gets to Forbes magazine and people ask questions. And people try to excuse it away and say, you know, would they see the smirking face of Obama, who looks just like his father, Lucifer, Satan, on this Bible series. People need to get a reality check and realize this is not a warm-up. This is not a rehearsal. This is a big show. It is a big show, I mean, especially when we take into account the 1984 scenario and uh, when we see this installation and Mr. William Binney, who was a former NSA employee, having created the, the, the spying program for the NSA, this multiple layer uh, spying program that they used for foreign intelligence, now he's being used yeah, domestically man. against the United States citizens where everything is being stored, everything you do, everything you say, everything you type, everything you Google, everything you you do on your phones, on your iPads. Everything is being stored away inside a super secret installation over there in Bluffdale, Utah, where they're storing at least 100 years of data. So whenever they want to know what you did recently, your bank movements, everything you have done throughout your entire life, they'll just press a button and this algorithm of this program called Stellar Wind will bring all the data and extrapolate all the information of you and all your social networking and your Facebook doings and everything you're doing for free for them and know everything about you so uh, basically this is the perfect uh, program for a tyrannical uh, Gestapo uh, SS uh, type of government why why do you think they want smart meters the smart meter is a primary data bus to all the smart appliances including your your DVR machines in your bedroom so they know yes yes he puts the left sock on first before he puts the right on and if you don't think they can answer that question you're just not living enough in the matrix. You don't no, understand. And these, and these, these smart TVs that they have, this 2.4 gigahertz energy bombarding your living room, all of that new technology is uh, very dangerous for your body. It disrupts the DNA. It can affect and mutate your DNA permanently, affect your uh, um, uh, reproduction rate. Everything is being affected by these new uh, wireless technologies, and I suggest getting off them as soon as possible. Yeah. It creates actually new DNA. We have uh, technologies to reverse that. Solar pulse resets it, almost like play press and reset to your cells. And we have nutraceuticals that can block it. Uh, what we have to do is realize that it's almost impossible to get, get away from it. You want to minimize it. Get the smart meter off your host. Threaten it if they come to your host and try to put it back on. You're going to shoot to kill. Uh, well, and I do mean that, okay? Give them a legal know, notice that they're violating property. You're going to sue them. I'm in the process of filing a suit. People keep on asking, what am I going to do? Uh, everybody else is fiddling around doing all kinds of junk that's wasteful of time and not going anywhere. The most simple, effective thing is to file in small claims court. Every month you can file a new claim under $5,000. You can ask interrogatories in any state uh, or any country. You can file small claims courts anywhere. 
But the real action is going to be when we file in federal court with the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, Dr. Bernhoft, and other experts being my witnesses, uh, bringing in uh, class action against uh, basically what's called wrongful uh, what was called wrongful enrichment, which is a RICO violation, doing a medical hazard because none of these are UL certified. They cause they cause literally electrical fires, including the gas fire up in uh, Bruno, uh, California. Um, People don't realize what's going on with the scalar non-thermal radiation to your body. It's not just toxic to your body. It actually can create new genetic sequences in your cells. They've actually done research in Russia and America in these classified facilities, and they can turn on atavistic genes so they can have chickens and, and, and turkeys turn on raptor genes. Raptor genes. Because remember, these are the animals that we think are chicken nuggets. They used to be millions of years ago. Velociraptors running around, you know, you know, seven, eight feet tall. <laughs> they were not on. They were not on the Chick Fil A menu. Let's put it that way. We were on their menu. <laughs> yeah, we were on their menu if we were, uh, you know, scampering around. So the fact is that people need to, to grasp what's really going on here. Most people don't understand how God created us. Do you know that ninety-seven uh, percent of the human genome is made from chunks of ancient viruses that are clumped together, and God literally put those together like Lego grit bricks to create our genetic sequences to allow these to create our collagen and elastin in our cell structure. You can actually prove it. Genetics have proven this. So when God says, I made man from the dust of the earth, he's not kidding. And, but it's amazing and it's miraculous. It still doesn't mean it's any less miraculous. The fact is, though, that, that knuckleheads out there think they know better than Dr. Deagle. You don't. You just don't, okay? Just get that reality check right now. You don't know better. Now, you may think that's arrogant, but if you don't listen to me, if you don't listen to Alexander Bachman, if you don't listen to Ann Morrison or John Moore, at some point you're going to regret it. Because it's going to kill you, it's going to kill your family, and it'll probably destroy your finances first, destroy your health if you don't listen. It's what's really irritating is we have news out there where people want to have their ears itched, like it says in the Bible. Oh, they want their ears itched. Oh yeah, tell me I'm really smart. I'm really making the right investments. I'm I'm doing the right thing, aren't I? No, we're not going to tell you that. We're going to tell you almost everything you believe is wrong. Everything you're doing is wrong, and every politician you believe is wrong, and even a lot of the religious beliefs you have are hogwash. They're not even based on what Jesus taught when he first was here on the earth. Well, That's they, they, what we're going to tell you. Yeah, they're, they're going to the extreme. This is all about the transgenic alien agenda. It has to do with the interdimensional entities that are satanic in nature that are pushing the hybrid, hybridization of our society into a transgenic form well, of society I'll, so they can take I, over. That I, is basically April, what's going April, on. National Geographic, April 2013, I was reading a copy this morning, and they said, should we resurrect or, or, or re uh, in unextinct extinct species like the passenger pigeon that disappeared in 1914, or uh, uh, a, a type of uh, Pyrenees goat that uh, died in the year 2000 or something? Uh, you know... What people need to understand, when they're talking about this public, there are generations ahead of this in reality. Generations. Well, they've been creating here. Uh, they just finished assembling the first uh, sequence for the Neanderthal. Right. So if you don't think they can make woolly mammoths and Neanderthals and all of the other creatures, you're wrong. Tell us about what's going on with the earth changes. We have uh, sinkhole city all over the planet. There are sinkholes. We have uh, a CME that happened last week. It hit the earth. Uh, it hit the earth on the opposite side of the earth, but it did have some effects. Uh, according to Professor McKenney, who I'm going to try to get back on the program in the next week or so, uh, this is the year when we're going to see something catastrophic. And as I say, if I look at my short list, that's why I tell people prep up like crazy, get your nutraceuticals, get your nutridine, etc. Be ready because this is the year when the uh, proverbial is going to hit the fan. This is not a joke. This is well, a, all a five alarm fire and I'm telling people my spidey sense is going crazy that something's going to happen here shortly. We have an economic meltdown. We've got geothermal changes occurring all over the planet including the release of permafrost and, and methane hydrates in the north. Now you, the report you sent me today I couldn't believe it when you sent it to me. I'm like God this is, can't be true. So tell us what it is. What are the Japanese up to now besides the insane so called you know chewing gum and bailing wire solution they had to Fukushima Daiichi and their power plant problems what's the latest stupid thing that they're up to? 
are um, doing a, a a scale model of uh, turning meth methane class rates into a natural gas and using that to, as a as a uh, fuel, and they're calling it a grain fuel. Of course, it isn't grain. And uh, I, we've discussed methane hydrates before when BP and the Macondo well blew up, uh, oh. the borehole blew up, because the, the methane class rates are stored in caverns all over the of the earth. And yeah. in fact, in fact, just today, the Office of Conservation of the state of Louisiana has issued a uh, alert status to Code 3. Uh, you know, they have a big sinkhole down there, and the problem is, is that they have methane in the aquifer, and the methane is linking into the into the sinkhole, and what they've been doing is they've been they've been um, drilling wells, and then they flare off the methane. Well, apparently the, this is only making this is uh, they now have seismic monitoring that has detected elevated subsurface activity in the area, and right. uh, they think they have fluid and gas movement inside the sinkhole, and so they've uh, so they've cut off all work there. Now, if they if that methane is coming from the methane class rate cavern and it's very likely that it is because of the explosion that occurred when the Macondo well blew and uh, the other uh, you know they opened up a migration channel into that meth methane class rate cavern and uh, if that I mean, they're getting ready for an explosion down there. They're, they have stopped yeah. all work. And by the way, those, those channels, and I've followed the geology, the ones in Louisiana follow a fault line system that goes all the way from a condo all the way to the Nomadrid fault uh, system that has over 25 sites with sometimes more than one reactor, very much like the Fukushima Daiichi reactor, Mark 1s, etc., all sitting on that fault line there within strike zone of a major superquake, the largest earthquake, Literally in the Western world, in the Northern Hemisphere, was yeah, in yeah. the 18, 1811 right. in, uh, and on the New Madrid system. People need to understand a 9 plus earthquake there is going to make all of those nuclear reactors make Fukushima look like a children's garden party. It's going to make well, the southwestern United States considerably, by orders of magnitude, much more radioactive. Well, and the, those fissures opening up, they know that that's happening into that cavern, into the cl methane class rate cavern, because right. they've got bubbling. They've got they've got um, methane gas in the aquifer, and that aquifer goes uh, all the way from northwestern Mississippi to southeastern Louisiana. It's a huge aquifer, and they have yeah. methane gas in there at such levels that it could explode. The aquifer well, could here, here, explode. Here's my theory about what caused the death of the dinosaurs, and it's different than what you'll hear typically, but it's an amalgamation based on what I've seen from many different researchers. I believe that the uh, asteroid or comet that struck off the Yucatan may not have been as big as we thought, but it was big enough to cause a massive release of methane hydrates. How thick do you think the methane hydrates are uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, varying from the least thick to the thickest area? It's from half a mile to two and a half miles thick. And the volume is over 640 volumes at, at the bottom of the, of the uh, Gulf of Mexico, which can be a mile and a half down, uh, to the surface volume of methane. And methane, by the way, is 16 times more of a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So my guess is what happened is we ended up in a thing called uh, these uh, Carolina Bays. Have you heard of those before? The Carolina Bays, we talked about this with Robert Felix, were explosions in the upper atmosphere that caused massive, if you want to call it, uh, holes in the or surface of the earth look like explosions, nuclear explosions. They're similar to fuel air bombs and they have a, an explosive power equivalent to nuclear bombs. Some of them would be big enough to be considerably bigger than even our larger nuclear bombs. They occurred by thousands all over the uh, earth. And it's my guess what happened is we had a massive release of methane hydrates that occurred with this giant uh, comet that struck the earth at the time of the dinosaurs. The methane class rates were released and caused air, air uh, explosions, fuel air bomb explosions in the atmosphere, rained down carbon in a layer, and, uh, and buckyballs, which we, we can actually see along a line at, at the time, and uh, also robbed the atmosphere of oxygen. In fact, if you just burn off the tar pits in Venezuela only in terms of number of teramoles of, 
of, of oil there, you drop the oxygen concentration of the planet to zero. So the dinosaurs were living in a place with two atmospheres of pressure at sea level with oxygen at 30 to 40 percent. And when uh, the oxygen dropped to 5 percent, the dinosaurs and these other larger animals, larger than 25 pounds, all died because when you have a larger animal, they can't exist in that low in oxygen concentration, but smaller animals might. And uh, that's what happened. And that period of time, by the way, took over 100,000 years for it to repair itself. So that's my theory about what happened. It was a combination of methane hydrate surges occurred after a big impact from a comet that struck the Yucatan, but it wasn't just there. The effects of release of methane hydrates are occurring everywhere. They're off the coast of California now. They're in the north of the uh, Arctic. They're everywhere on the planet. We're seeing methane hydrates are already being released and bubbling up from the ocean floor and under the ground, and I think the methane hydrates are directly tied to these uh, issues that happen, including these sinkholes. There's, think there's a linkage there. They're also linked to these fault lines because there's, whenever you're drilling down in these areas, you trigger off earthquakes and you trigger off methane release. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and those scenarios do not take into account the fact that Japan is deliberately releasing the methane class rates. In other words, Which is going to, by the way, trigger off earthquakes because you have to think of it. When you take I mean, the Aceh, Indonesia, I heard this from an oil engineer who, uh, who, uh, who actually did some research stuff on what happened on the uh, Makondo drill site, which means the devil's food, and he said when they take a specific gravity of oil and gas out of the uh, giant oil fields in Indonesia and they pump in, these large companies like Exxon Mobil pump in water of a different specific gravity. They change the geotectonics and the forces that are involved, and that's why when the ocean floor moved to equivalent of a, you know, four or five thousand feet in a matter of seconds, this is what causes the tsunami to occur there. The tsunami occurred because a giant, if you want to call it, like a piston, moved in the ocean floor because of the change in geotectonics of the uh, of the sea floor. And uh, when the Japanese are doing this kind of thing, playing around with methane hydrates, they're actually risking an even bigger earthquake than the one than the upthrust one that occurred off Sendai, Japan. Um, I think it's craziness, especially when uh, we know that ringing the Earth with a large electromagnetic pulse from a coronal mass ejection, like the Carrington event, is almost certainly likely to happen again. And it turns out uh, that CME is ringing the Earth like a bell, and if there's stored energy in the rocks, it'll cause a big earthquake or volcanism. It's going to release it. And so you can expect superquakes and super earthquakes and volcanoes to occur, especially if they're near your equinoxes, planetary alignments, uh, perigee or syzygee, these various different alignments that can actually increase gravitonic forces and increase the energy or if they're uh, um, the right energy spectral frequency pattern to trigger certain earthquake fault lines to, to, to release their energy. Um, I think this year is going to be a nasty year. I, I really think that uh, between this year and next with the solar activity uh, going on with these comets being pushed in by an object in the Oort cloud, which is almost certainly a red or, or brown dwarf star that uh, Professor McCauley has been talking about for years, this is the year of the comet, and I think combined with stupid moves by the Japanese to, to drill or the fact that they're not talking about the fact that the Macondo drill site is still leaking out gas and other material they're using corrects at 9500 still at the ocean floor to try to hide it they're still doing that and they're telling you go and eat the seafood it's perfectly fine because you can't see it <laughs> nasty eh? nasty nasty you, nasty Dr. nasty it's amazing isn't it closing comments anybody uh, pray hard pray really hard yeah this year we're gonna we're facing a, a I call the devil's set of cards this year and people need to realize if you don't rely on the most high God if you don't prep if you don't pray you're gonna be surprised by how shocking things can become just look what happened in Cyprus if you don't think they can freeze your bank accounts or squeeze them if you don't think that we can have an airborne plague if you don't think that we could have a release of radiation like we missed a bullet a few days ago from Japan think again and prep